Okay, welcome back to Least Fans in Hostile Lands. We were just talking about and and thank you so much for joining us and thank you again for not immediately turning it off. This is a good time. I think we did this last week when we talked about poop. Yeah, I, I think we've been talking yeah, to an empty room for the last couple of weeks. That's okay. That's what well, we technically are every week. We're always just into yeah, a screen. That's a very good point. <laughs> And our wives are like, what the fuck again? I thought this was only going to go 40 episodes. We're closing in on 50. Prove it's exciting. Them wrong. Two weeks until we hit 50 episodes. Guys, do you want to do another Who Said It? Or should we come up with a different game? Oh, geez, that sounds fun. Oh, well, let's come up with something special. Okay. okay, we'll come up with something special, and, and, and it'll be a good time. Because last time we did Who Said It at 25 episodes, that was fun. And we, we stumped each other pretty good, but we, it was really, really fun. Speaking <laughs> of fun... The Leafs! Oh my god! Especially if your idea of fun is having a mild heart attack every time they play. That's brutal, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Craig, you want to tell us about your heart condition? Uh, Well, Dan was saying the other day that he didn't think he could watch this team into his 50s. I don't think I could watch this team through my 30s. Jesus, I've been calling it heart attack hockey for the last, what, week? At least. Yeah, something like that. Oh, this Nothing is safe. Nothing is... Nothing is safe at this point, except for we know that when they go up, they're going to blow it and somehow come back and win. At this point, it really can't get worse. So, okay. Well, okay. To be fair, we could be losing games, which we're not really doing that anymore. Is a very, we did go through yeah. a bad streak. Oh, yeah. A three-game losing streak, one of which was an, uh, excuse me, OT loss. <laughs> Everything else is a two-game losing streak. So, that is still considering... Pretty, pretty good. Uh, our most previous three games, Canucks, Blue Jackets, and Kraken. Canucks came out hot. Leafs came back. Canucks won. Exciting. Lots and lots of goals. Ended up being 6-4. Well, let's just flip that well, idea When you play the game head. of goalie, yeah. sometimes you lose yeah, the exactly. game of goalie. Exactly. Sometimes you do. In fact, the Leafs often lose the game of goalie, and they need to just win the game of score way too many. Speaking of which... The Blue Jackets and the Kraken. I'd say both teams, uh, I guess all three teams, lost the game of goalie. Because the Blue Jackets, it was the Leafs are up 3 nothing, no problem, or 3-1. And the Blue Jackets come back, and the Leafs, and they just go back and forth. And just thank God, hung on. They, just, they just come out with a win. Kraken, literally the same thing. I cannot believe the same thing happened. Three goals, extremely dominant first period. Kraken comes back, and Leafs are just like, well, I guess we got to do it again. So they dominate later on in the period. But, you know, that's that's what we were talking about in the earlier part of the season. Like, this is kind of the playoff habits that we want to see, that if they get down, if they, especially if they start with a couple lead advantage, if they, or a couple goal advantage, if they get down, that they're able to pick up their socks and get back in there and actually win the game and close it out. So... They're starting to maybe show one of those playoff habits that it's making me a little more comfortable going into the playoffs. Okay. Craig, agree, disagree, or also a heart attack sort of inducing (laughs) thing? It's all heart attack inducing at this point. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I don't love watching this kind of hockey. I'd much rather dominate the entire game and not just sit on our ass for the second period. But if we can't have that, I'm glad they're coming back in the third. So. Do we think the whole problem is the goalies or is there more to it than just the goalies aren't allowing anything and they have to outscore it? Is it still a defensive issue or is it just, you know, yes, it's just, the goalies. No, yeah. it's, it's, it's a patented nurse. Yes. The defense <laughs> okay. is, is not always good and the goalies are not always good. Yes. But the scoring has been always good, at least in the past couple of games. And that's that the only true. thing we have going for us right now is kind of we can outscore our lo- our blunders. Because what I've been seeing is like there have been a lot of shots from the point or shots from even right on that are getting tipped right in front of the net that we're not having our defense move those players out of the way. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can't rely on Mrazik or Campbell to, to expect that every time and get that um, blocker down to save it. So it, it's got to be a thing where they're working together. Yeah, that's a really good point. There have been a lot of deflected goals, and it, that really does... Yes, you want to see a, a save coming from the goalie on those situations, but 
that comes down to the fence. They're letting guys get in there and get those tips. I agree. However, I did see several times, specifically, I test sort of stuff. Dermot and Labushkin in particular moving players in front of their own net, like physically moving them could be interference sometimes, but actually doing what other teams <laughs> have been doing to that. them. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, and I, that, that must be just coming down from the top. Like we got to do this boost. You are freaking huge. Dermot, you, like you haven't been in the lineup for an extended period of time. You're only here because Sandy and is sick with something. Come on. And and I think they're coming through in both games, Canucks and Kra- or not Canucks, uh, Blue Jackets and Kraken. I saw that several times. Now the tips, you know, did happen, but the goalies let in some soft ones, and I can't yeah, think of them well. specifically. Yes. But I, it stuck enough in my brain that I'm like, really, that? It was very very surprising. So combination, but but maybe I'll give him a bit for uh, actually moving people in front of the net which we've been harping on and many others have been have been harping on too i've definitely been noting that bush has been doing that he's been really good in front of the net he's been questionable in some other situations but he's really just getting defensive minutes he's playing the hardest guys right now i think but yes he is doing a really good job of doing exactly what we've been asking someone to do is just move a body in front of the net can he play offensive minutes no but he can do this one thing and he's doing it well it seems like it's rubbing off on someone like Dermot, who is also doing a pretty good job of, job of it lately. I do have one more eye test question for you guys about these last couple games. Are you noticing that the defense is jumping up even more aggressively than before? I've seen defensemen Brody, Hall, even Labushkin in front of the net. Like, not just down the boards and losing position. In front of the net. Hall had a goal where he tipped it yeah. in front of the net. Are you guys seeing this too, or is it just like I'm just seeing it like every once in a while? Dan? No, I, I think you're right. They're certainly playing a little bit more forward uh, hockey and a little bit more aggressively. I, I mean, a couple times you see Riley skating around behind the net. And I know it's Riley. He gets a little bit of a pass because he's a, another forward. But, you know, when you have all your defense that concentrated around the net, it is oper- the opportunity is there for breakouts to happen the other way. And we're still seeing those breakouts happen. We're still seeing those odd man rushes against uh, Morazic or Campbell that one of our defenders just, it's just not effective against. Craig, good thing or bad thing that they're jumping up even more aggressively? I think they've been able to jump up aggressively because the, um, the centers, the other forwards have been doing a really jo- good job of getting back and covering those points, especially Matthews. Matthews, he lets Riley get up to the front there and he's almost always right there at the point or Marner or comp for any of those guys which is allowing those guys to go in and actually the hall goal where he had that tip right in front yes it's kind of funny why is hall at the crease but it was actually a really smart play because he came in the last second of the period and at two seconds something like that he had the awareness to know that there was only you know a few seconds left and that puck's not going down to the other end of the ice in any very significant manner so why not jump in crash the net in those last few minutes when of that last few seconds when he has the puck and he has an opportunity. I think it was a great heads up play by him. Uh, but we have so many offensive defensemen and they're so good at keeping the puck in the zone, especially the forward, especially that top line that you're running a risk. Yes. Of having two on ones going the other direction, but I think they're doing a really good job of keeping the puck in the zone in those situations. So the forwards are making up for the defensemen. We're playing to the defensemen's strengths and also the forwards are, are learning a little more about defense, which Austin Matthews has improved so much this year on defense. He's, I don't think he was ever really a liability, mm-hmm. but you can notice some really discreet and deliberate defensive moves made by Matthews, and he's really becoming that 200-foot player. And on top of that, he's scoring goals like Rocket Richard himself, like Ovechkin, Incredible. like damn near Gretzky. This is insane and i'm not sure if we'll ever see a leaf player like this again so take (laughs) it in folks take it in (laughs) dan tell us about matthews this year i mean he's been unstoppable for the most part uh in his last 10 games he's got 16 points 10 goals in the last 10 games uh a stat that i saw on twitter the other day or sorry not the other day after last night's game 
in his last 37 games, he scored 35 goals, which is crazy. Like that's the yeah. latter half of the season. And that is incredible scoring. So like this guy is on fire. He's, he can score from anywhere on the ice. His shooting percentage from almost everywhere is, is basically even except, you know, the left side right in front of the crease. That's obviously the highest because that's yeah. his favorite spot. <laughs> but then you look at his season stats and he's got 75 points this season. and his top for any season with the Leafs, obviously, is 80. So he is, well, he's going to smash right through that. Uh, he's having a fantastic season. His The line he's on is supporting him extremely well. Bunting's turned out to be an incredibly good player with them. And uh, he, the only player better in the last 10 is Marner with 17 points. So I, I'm loving our first line right now. Greg, what are you seeing with Matthews? Like, what are you not seeing, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, it's it's all the things we've been talking about. Yes, he's got the amazing shot. He from that left side, he's, you know, if he's got a good look, the puck's going in. He is playing really well defensively. Like I said, he's often at that point. So even when the puck does come back, he's there and he's got it. He's got a good rush to the net. Um, he's tipping pucks. He scored an empty net the other night. I know some people will say, oh, well, it's an empty net goal. But that means that they trust him enough to be out there with the man down and killing off that penalty or killing off the, you know, the man advantage. I think it's not even that. Like, I think I saw last night, he leads the league in takeaways as well. He's just a takeaway machine. That was one strength in his game is if you're near him and you got the puck, you may not for very long. Yeah. And he is so explosive. And like with Mitch and with uh, Michael Bunting, they're just so good at reading with which way that play's going. So as soon as he takes that puck away, they're just turned around the other direction and they're going they've turned into a pretty good rush line. Like in the past, they've been a really good cycle line. And when the puck stays in the zone, they get the good looks. Then they finally get that shot away and they get a good goal. But this season, they've also become a good rush line. And like Matthew's defensive play is a big part of that. So he's able to capitalize on his own opportunities. And he's the one that's making those opportunities. What I'm seeing from that full line the most is their creativity, I think. And it's it's confusing the other teams a little bit more. So I really hope that's the thing that is carried into the playoffs. Don't stick to what's been working all the time. And and things it's gonna it's gonna be an ebb and flow for sure. But the creativity is really, really coming through. And just that pressure, 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 pressure. Let's try this, let's try that, and let's do something crazy. I think he almost tried the Michigan at one point. And then it didn't he work did. he, he's and gonna try it. went yeah. around and scored anyway. Like, keep that creativity <laughs> flowing. And the line is going to be extremely dominant from there. On top of that, Mitch is shooting. So it's not just go for Matthews because he's going to shoot. No, it's, it's, it's all over the place. And then Bunting's going to steal the puck from you anyway to get it to one of those two. So keep that creativity going, gents. However, I am worried because last year in the playoffs, those two went dry. There was nothing. No nothing Matthews, happened. It was no so Marner. Disappointing. And, you know, we saw it in uh, All or Nothing. Kind of got into their heads. They were the last couple in the dressing room, heads down. Dubas had a meeting with Marner, just like, like, just play your game. It's okay. Like, we're not expecting the world from you. Just enjoy yourself out there. Get some, get some juices flowing and whatnot. So with Matthews being so dominant right now, obviously we're all clinching our butts for the playoffs. Craig, what is potentially stopping this trend from continuing into the playoffs, whether it's a leaf thing or a leafy thing or a playoffs thing or potentially a team we might play? What what could stop this train? Well, a you, I think all those things. I'm going to say the the nurse patented yes. <laughs> um but they could play well a really said, good Craig, team really like insightful. Vasilevsky can stop them on his own not even to mention the juggernauts they are in the fens and all the amazing forwards that they have in tampa um playoff style hockey might do it just the leafs like we've seen they're not a super aggressive tough team they it works really well in the regular season because you get a lot more penalty calls i'm really curious to see what it will be like again in the playoffs when they're not getting those power plays and they're not getting the penalties and they're getting roughed up a little bit more matthews is a huge guy he i think when he gets into Hulk mode, he can do some of these things. I just want to see that come out a little bit more. It doesn't happen very often. I really want to see that happen in the playoffs. 
I don't know what I, I think those would be the two biggest things. Maybe goaltending might stop the team. Like we don't really know. They've they've been able to outscore their problems, but when they're not getting power plays, I'm still fragile. I'm still fragile from the <laughs> yeah. playoffs. Yeah. The good thing is that's only again, it's only up from what happened last year. Unless it's a sweep. Dan, anything stopping stopping this train? I think there could be two potential things to stop this train. Uh, actually, three. So, Craig, you made me think a hot goalie is one of them. If we encounter a hot goalie in the playoffs, um, that can change anything. But that can change anything with any team and any player. True. I think confidence is going to be a big thing. They're all young guys. If they, get, uh, if they lose their confidence, they get in their head like they did last year in the playoffs, it's going to be a struggle to come back, and that's something that worries me. The other thing is injury. If we see an injury on that first line, 45% of our production in points comes from that first line on the team in this year. If we see an injury on that line, we are screwed. Like immediately the chemistry of that line is thrown off. And then with that, you're going to have to jumble up all the other lines and lose whatever chemistry they've built for the last few months. I think that would probably be the worst thing to happen to them right now. Okay. Quick question segment, like actually quick question. First name that comes to your head. Bunting goes down. Who replaces him? Craig. Kasha. Dan. I I actually agree. I think that would be a really good replacement. I don't think you'd want to move anyone else up. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to go with Kasha too. I would say Kerfoot because he's on the fourth right now. So he's kind of movable quite a bit. And that's and that's And Kasha's been injured already. He hasn't been playing quite as much. And Kerfoot's been really good this year. I, I almost said Kerfoot. But... I don't know if he's first line material at the moment. Like he's okay. playing decently well, but I don't know if he can keep up with the other two guys in terms of production. Marner goes down. Craig, who replaces him? Kasha. <laughs> okay. Honestly, Damn. if if <laughs> that's not a bad. Anyway, you're not wrong. Though, he, that's the thing. He's shown he can play both sides. Like he's done it. So. Okay. Okay. Dan Kasha as well. Kasha, maybe I, you can't I take think Neilander that off too because then you're losing no. assists and production. Uh, Engvall, you can't really move, but either Engvall or Kasha, I think. I think that's where you might want Kerfoot actually because he provides a little bit more of a similar mm. skill set than Marner. Completely different than what Bunting is going to bring. Like they need that guy who's going to go to the net, and that could be Kasha. But in terms of a guy who can just make some opportunities and can make some decent passes, I think Kerfoot might not be bad there. I think Nylander. I think John Tavares on the second line can play either role, the goal scorer or the passer. Whereas Nylander on the top line, he takes over for Marner as the creative player, potentially the scorer, and Bunting is still getting the puck to both hot shot guys. So I say Nylander, bump him up. Worst case, Ontario, Matthews goes down. Craig, who could possibly replace that? Connor McDavid? <laughs> sure, why not? Do we have another equivalent? Bring Gretzky no, not back. really. Um, I guess, again, it would probably be Kerfoot. He's a guy who can play center. If you're moving John up there, it's going to be a... You're juggling everything at that point. But in yeah. terms of just a single move up, I guess Kerfoot would be our next best center to go up there. I, I think you're probably right. I mean, if, if Matthew goes down for any kind of long-term period, we're looking at next season at this point. So um, fair. fair. Yeah. I think that wrong. would be very worst case scenario. I think JT goes up JT and Marner. You yeah, know, probably. And then yeah. Kerfoot maybe goes with Neenlander at that point, or even Kampf becomes the second line center. That's a possibility. And then Kerfoot, third line, good shutdown. Spets a fourth line. He's basically the center there anyway, or Engvall or something like that. But I think you still need to have that elite top line, and, and Tavares is the next best thing. Oh, God. I don't want to talk about them, but I think we should. We have to talk about our goalies. Oh. Oh, I, th I thought you were going to say the B word. What's the B word? Boston. Oh, we're not there that's yet. A, that's at the end. I, oh, that's coming. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is what happens when Craig doesn't look at the outline. <laughs> but at the same time, a little bit of ESPN there with, with Craig. He knew it was coming. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so it's been basically 50-50 for the past couple of weeks, and we did mention last week that 
maybe that's getting into Campbell's head that he's not the starting guy, that Mrazek is there and and Campbell doesn't have the pressure. So let's talk about Mrazek a little bit more. He's pretty damn squirrely these days. I guess maybe he is just a squirrely goalie. Anyway, oh, speaking of squirrely, one time Craig and I went to a 67s game. I think it was our first one in Ottawa, and they had to do a goalie change, or they just did a goalie change for the 67s. And this goalie comes out, and he's he's just, like, jittering. He's, like, twitching. And then even <laughs> if the puck is in the other end, he's like, all right, I'm ready. I'm so ready, going from post to post. So we just named him Twitch. He was like, what is Twitch doing? <laughs> yeah, he, he just would not relax the entire game. You know, usually the goalies can kind of get a little bit relaxed when the puck's at the other end of the ice, and they're like, he's fully ready the entire time. And just like, all right, coach, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. All right, I got this. I'm not going to mess up. Goal scored. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm still ready. I'm still ready. Oh, uh, goal scored. It was, it was a weird game. <laughs> I feel like I could take on the Empire myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Dan, tell us about Peter Mrazek and, and maybe finish off with why would Dubis want a, a goalie like this? Yes, sir. I'm glad you asked. So so just a little bit of history on Mrazek. Uh, he's 30 years old Czech player, Czech goalie, obviously. He's been playing for 10 years now in the NHL, drafted by Detroit in 2012-2013. His uh, first professional appearance with Detroit was against St. Louis, which he won, which this is kind of cool, and I didn't know this, but with that win, he became the second goaltender of all time to win his first ECHL, AHL, and NAL, NHL debuts in the same season, joining Alex Ald, the only other player to do this. So that was cool. kind of cool. Hmm. He obviously signed with the Leafs uh, as a free agent for $3.8 million up until 2024, so we have him for a while. He had a really decent season. He played, um, he was a tandem goalie in Carolina and had a good season at the end of last year, um, averaging 9.23 save percentage and a 2.06 2.06 goals against in his 12 games that he played with Carolina. This year, however, he's played 15 games and is doing considerably worse. He's sitting at 8.90 save percentage and 3.28 goals against average. So he was injured in his groin in the first half of the season like almost immediately at the start of the season and then came back kind of struggled to find his footing he's been picking up a little bit since then um but just you know what before i get into why dubas wanted him a little fun fact uh that everybody mm-hmm. should know um he was half the reason why the leafs lost to david Ayers when he and reimer oh. were both injured yes he was carolina yep so th- we have that to be you know grateful for to Mrazek. and it- it's also funny that it was his now teammate, Kyle Clifford, was the one that injured him in that game to bring yeah. errors into the game. Exactly. Recently exactly. re-signed Kyle Clifford. <laughs> Just today or something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, but in terms of why Dubas would want him, um, his save percentage was better than Anderson. He was having a better season than Anderson last year, and it looked like he might be picking up steam and doing better. Anderson uh, had injuries last year, and then when he was healthy, he couldn't quite keep up uh, with the team, as we know, and we didn't really have confidence in him going into the last half of the season. Of course, that's all changed this season with him playing. Rough. But um, he also came from a tandem team. So he was playing with Reimer and Adelkovic in Carolina, and he was really comfortable with that, and that's kind of what Dubas wanted going forward, uh, to have him and Campbell work as a tandem on the Leafs. And so he definitely wanted to sign a goalie that was comfortable doing that and had experience. And then there was also money. I mean, Anderson um, just cost too much. I think he was four point something, 4.8. Oh, 4.1. Yeah. So he just cost a little bit more than they wanted to spend on a goalie. Marazic coming in at 3.8 was the right price, right person at the right time. And it uh, was just too tempting for Dubas to pick up. And surprisingly, Anderson only went for 4.5 for two years. 4.5, uh, yeah. 4.5, sorry. To I, Carolina, and uh, wow, what a pickup. But only two years, which is going to be interesting because he'll be 34 by the time his contract is up. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he can cash in much more than that. I want to digress on that a little bit. Just talk about Frederick Anderson just quickly. Do you think there was a souring of the relationship in the team? Because he went and signed for. You know, a lot less than we were expecting him to sign, re-sign in Toronto. Do you think it was a bit of a, a spite thing or like, I feel like. Or he just wanted to keep playing. The things end funny with, with Freddie. Like, 
why did they walk away from him? Like he wasn't that bad. Like in hindsight, let's do our hindsight is twenty twenty. What do you think happened there? Yeah, I'm maybe not souring with the team, but he just needed a change of scenery. Okay. And Carolina, okay. while they are very fun and very hot right now, it's still a small market team like Carolina. It's not a it's not a hockey place. Just wanted to go somewhere that didn't have the same uh, pressure. And it's there's there's a potential that. It was maybe only Carolina that wanted to take a chance on him, that the Possible. offers weren't as high mm-hmm. as he had expected because he's so injury prone. There were a lot of injuries over the past couple of years, and he didn't really live up to expectation after his first, I think, two years with Toronto. So there might not have actually been offers. And it's like, you know what? Carolina is an up and coming team. I can work with the defense core in front of me, the forwards in front of me. Let's, let's go for that at a reasonable number. And there were two open spots, remember, because that's true. Mrazic and Reimer both left and were UFAs, and they traded Nedeljkovic, which was the craziest, stupidest thing I've ever seen. Which turned <laughs> out to be the best dice roll ever. Like they, so they must have saw something because he has been garbage. The last no, while. he's actually he hasn't been that bad. He was really garbage against uh, the Leafs, obviously, but but for Detroit, and Detroit's not great. He's he's been putting up decent, better than Mrazic numbers at least. Well, that's not hard. That's true. That's true. But I don't the know. Leafs, the Leafs guys are putting up Tosca, Vessel Toscala numbers right now. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Mrazic, a little underwhelming at this point, I think, especially for me, because I really did like him as a goalie when he was with Carolina. And you were pumped when we got him. I was. I was. I had him in fantasy for a couple years, actually, and a couple trade offers coming for Mrazic because he had such good numbers when he wasn't injured. So I'm like, you know what? Let's go. Let's go. It gets injured. I'm like, well, that makes sense. And then non-injuries just, ah, he's, he's, he's weird. And he's, he's kind of like Twitch. He's, he's all over the place. Doesn't know where his posts are. It's very, very weird. It happens. And it in happens. my memory of, of Mrazic, like over his career, I remember a couple things that kind of stick in my mind. He's often injured. When he's back, he's playing really well. Or he's playing terribly. He's a very streaky goalie. Yes. Um, that only ends up playing usually half a season. So he's kind of done that at this point. We have we've seen the cold Mrazek. I'm waiting to see the hot Mrazek. He can get hot. He can play really well. And I'm hoping that there's going to be something that's going to come in, in the next couple of games. I see that they've given him a few more opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, they gave Jack almost a week off. That I hope he can get into a little bit more of a rhythm, and maybe once the Leafs have a little bit more defensive help in front of him, it might just be what he needs to, you know, get back in the game to what we think he actually can be. I haven't heard yet, but I expect Mrazek will play against the Coyotes, and then yeah, probably uh, think so. Campbell will play the outdoor game against the Sabers, which is coming up yeah. on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Interesting, but cool, cool. Craig, you mentioned that Mrazek's kind of been, you know really really bad or playing well which is kind of how the Leafs have been playing and I kind of hate that we yeah. have a, the goalies that are playing that way and the team that's playing that way at the same time one of them being consistent and and I keep using this word almost every podcast but consistency is the best thing you want in hockey and if we had a consistent goaltending with spotty defense and offense sure I can take that as long as we can stand up and net or the opposite but Having both of those go hot and cold at the same time just aren't isn't working right now. Luckily, that hasn't really happened yet. the The forward group has been pretty darn consistent in terms of being able to score every game. Now there are the odd game that either they get goalied or they just you know pull a Buffalo game, uh, but they're they have been pretty consistent to be able to put up pretty good numbers. And luckily, the inconsistency has really just been in goal because even the defense have been. The same defensive team that we've seen over the last X number of years. They're, you know, Except for last year. Zone. Last year, we, we thought the D was mm. really, really good. Yeah. And it's it really wasn't come out that it was the Canadian division. <laughs> yeah. We were really salty okay. about that at the time, and now it comes out, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what that's it was. True. That wasn't necessarily our problem in the playoffs, though. It wasn't the D. It was price oh, no, that's... and lack of offense. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. kind of collapsed our season. That's a completely different sport, Dan. We're not talking about the playoffs. That's true, yeah. Sorry, playoffs <laughs> is NHL Plus. Speaking of the D, talking about the D and the trade D line, deadline, I mean, the deadline. Kyle Dubas spoke, I believe it was last Friday, saying he's not going to go for a goalie. That's not his 
his uh, goal right now to go for a goalie, and he's probably not going to go for a forward. They're looking for one more move on defense because that's what they need. And again, pointing out that Muzzin's LTIR relief, is it, it's there, but Muzzin was back on the ice this week, non-contact sort of thing. They're, they're not going to use his LTIR. They're going to expect that he comes back before the playoffs and therefore not really available to them at the trade deadline. In previous years, Dubas has has made moves at the deadline based on how the team is doing and how, if the team deserves it. Last year, he felt they deserved it. Went and got Nick Foligno and a little bit more defensive depth with uh, Ben Hutton. And there's somebody else that's uh, escaping me right now. But the year before that was the trade deadline was the David Ayers game, basically. And, and he was so <laughs> pissed. You could see it on the broadcast. And he didn't do any moves. It was just like, no, why would I invest in this team? Why would I take away futures mm -hmm. to invest in this team that is just just throwing it all to shit? And then obviously the pandemic hit and the bubble happened. And that's, that's all external stuff. But at the time, they didn't deserve it. They did not deserve an upgrade. So this year, gentlemen, do you think the Leafs deserve an upgrade? And therefore, do you think uh, Dubas is, is going to upgrade them based on deserving? Or do you think Dubas is going to upgrade for other reasons, maybe to save his own yeah, job? Okay. What, uh, what do you think might happen from the Dubas perspective? Well, Kyle, I think we do see a trade. I, I think, A, the Leafs deserve it, but also, B, I'm not confident that this is a final round playoff NHL team right now. I think... Oof! I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, we are hot and cold that against net. you. <laughs> We're hot and cold in net. Our offense is great, but you can't rely on six goals a game every single night to win games. So, and, and we have a lot of money that we have to spend next year to keep this team, to keep it in the same kind of caliber of players that it is right now. Um, we're kind of reaching a pinch point where if they don't perform well in the playoffs, what the hell are we doing here? And so I think that, whether or not they deserve it, it's probably going to be a move to strengthen our defense to really try and perform well in the playoffs. I think it's all about playoffs this year. We're going to make the playoffs. That's not really in question too much. How we do it is what's up in the air. Greg, do you think they deserve it? And do you think Dubas is making a move because they deserve it or something else? I, I think they deserve it. Look at this top line. Austin Matthews now has, what, 43 goals? You can't waste a season like that going out in the first round in the playoffs. Like, they have, they've, they've already made some, they've already made trades. They've made some great signings this offseason. Like, Kasha, Kampf, uh, Bunting, they have really paid off. They've been great signings. And I think you need to make sure. Don't forget that Nick Ritchie guy. <laughs> you mean Labuskin? Since he's left, he's scored. Uh, three goals and two assists or five points, something like that. Yeah. Five points been, in five games. Yeah. Fantastic. He, he's you. also getting first pair or first line minutes. So that makes sense that he'll, you know, get an opportunity to score. These guys are, are there to score. He just couldn't keep up with the line that he was playing with. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he gets a video <laughs> tribute on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Cause he's coming back. Please do. And it could be seven seconds long. You've it's got nine minutes. <laughs> His two points and then just him staring up from the bench. Uh. <laughs> um, okay, back to Chris. <laughs> Sorry, I don't remember what the question was now. Kyle Dewis, yes, they deserve it. I think a he, they need to make some moves because, yes, they do deserve it. This is one of the best, least forward groups we've seen in years. Maybe, probably ever. Probably at any time in our lives, it's the best forward group. And... They've got some real potential, and I think that they need to make some moves, and I think he needs to make some moves and have some success to possibly save his job. I don't think, no matter how this season ends, Dubas should be worrying about his job. I think he did a great job this year in the offseason, and if they're going to get screwed, they're going to get screwed by the playoff format in this league right now. They're very well going to finish top 10 team in the whole league, or far, or they might be top five and still play a top three team. Like, it doesn't really make sense. I don't think he should be worrying about his job. I think he should be worrying about wasting great years of these guys' careers and not going farther than they have. 
So Craig again using the patented nurse response. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Basically, how I really that do went. need to make you a mug with that on it. I I'm excited. I'm really excited. Now he did mention Dubis did mention that he's not going for a forward. Do you potentially think that's because well a the forward group is really really good or that Nick Robertson coming back and looking pretty good at least I would say that Nick Robertson is. The deadline pickup, but he's just internal. Do you think he's he's that little boost the team needs? Or better yet, how do you think Nick Robertson is is doing? We'll, we'll start with Craig this time. Well, he scored, which is a really good sign. He's <laughs> he's played really well with that line. I think he's given them a little bit more energy. Uh, I, I think he might be considered the forward you know, play, uh, trade deadline pickup. He's been struggling with injuries over the last you know, couple of years. But seeing him healthy, seeing him playing well, I think it's a great, you know, quote unquote, pickup for the team right now. Yep, I I agree with you, Craig. I don't think um, I don't think the forwards is where we really need to worry that much. And if we can bring up Robinson and Robertson, sorry, and he can play well as he has in the last few games, then great. Forwards are filled out. Let's focus on D. Well, that's why they have Robertson. Exactly. (laughs) Noted defenseman. (laughs) <laughs> Noted, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! And then his bro, like he's definitely got to be feeling it from his brother that he got two hat tricks in a row. Two hat tricks in a row, yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> and Dallas is on a tear right now. I traded Jake Ottinger. Oh my god, for Robin Leonard, who got injured and he's okay, but immediately didn't he? Yeah, it was pretty immediate. Ouch. But I was like, Jack Eichel's coming to the Vegas Golden Knights. They're gonna take off, and they've actually gone down since. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck. And Ottinger's been so good. Missed up that trade. Missed up that trade. Funny sport, but eh? That's okay. Trade deadline's fun. It's coming up. It's coming up. I think we'll have a podcast on the day of or the day after, so that'll be fun to kind of go over the moves that have happened. Next week, we'll do our let's make a bet on on what we think might happen, how many deals there might be, what the deal might be, blah, 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 blah. We hope you guys play along, too. But speaking of the playoffs, Boston is in the rearview mirror. Look out for those motherfuckers. Oh, my God. I was not expecting that. I thought, okay, at least can, the worst they can do is get third. And Boston's like, in case nope. you didn't know, we are two <laughs> to four points behind you. So look yeah. out, guys. That's, that's a little disconcerting. Now, I don't think the Leafs could fall out of a playoff spot because there's like a 10-point gap between the second wildcard yeah. team and the next team approaching. So I think we're okay there, and the Leafs are, are quite good. Uh, even given their goalie and their D situation. So things could shuffle. That means we could play any number of teams. Tampa and Florida are still the most likely teams to play in the first round. If the Leafs go on a hot streak, maybe Campbell gets his mojo back or Mrazek discovers that he actually knows where the posts are, they could (laughs) shoot up to the top and potentially play Washington. Washington is, is the second wild card spot in unless they go on a tear, are likely to continue with that spot. If the Leafs fall off and get maybe the second wild card spot, maybe the first wild card spot, depends, they could also play the Carolina Hurricanes, who are the top wild card spot. I would guess that the New York Rangers and Pittsburgh Penguins are going to secure the second or third, and Carolina is going to take the top. That's my, my best guess. And it's extremely unlikely that they play Boston. Because Boston, again, they're up and coming. If the Leafs get top spot, maybe Boston goes to bottom spot. But uh, again, unlikely. So Tampa, Florida, Washington, Carolina, or Boston. Which team would you prefer to play in the first round out of those one, two, three, four, five? Kind of some some two high-scoring teams and obviously the previous Stanley Cup champions, maybe three high-scoring teams because Carolina and two bigger, heavier teams in Washington and Boston. Dan, you, get, you got a, a preference? I'd like to play Ottawa. I think that'd be a really good pairing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. That's no. where we well, that's lose. Fair. That's Are you okay. insane? <laughs> good point. We would lose every single game. 20 Absolutely to lose that game. <laughs> um, I think I'd probably like to see Florida. Or sorry, uh, not Florida, Tampa. Um, Florida's just too good. They keep stringing together these wins to go on um, really multiple game streaks, which is 
pretty terrifying when you get to the playoffs. You string together four games and you win. So I'm going to say Tampa because they're coming off two wins. Can they make it three? That's a lot of pressure. And I feel like if there's a team that can knock out, well, yeah, as I say, it's ridiculous. But if there's a team that can knock out the sec, the two time Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup champions, it would be the Leafs who are not expected to do anything in the playoffs anyway, ever. So I would much rather it be Tampa than, um, than Florida at this point. And then I would love to watch a Boston Toronto show off again. But again, my heart can't take that kind of pressure. So <laughs> I'd like to stay away from that. <laughs> I personally, I would say Washington just because a, they don't have any sort of goaltending and B, they at least have shown that they can play well against them. Uh, or I wouldn't mind seeing a Boston one because a, they don't have too much for goaltending right now. And B, it would just be the perfect storyline that that's the team they beat in the first round when they go on to finally win the Stanley cup. I do not want to play Carolina because I cannot take a Frederick Anderson series. I don't want to play Tampa (laughs) because it's freaking Tampa and Florida. They just, if there's one team that can outscore the Leafs outscoring their own problems, it's Florida somehow. So I don't think any of those teams, if any of them, it's going to be Washington that I want to see. And it'd be a nice little circle like that first series or the first year when they came back, you know, they took them to six games when they shouldn't even been there. And it would just be a nice, nice storyline to play them again and finally beat them. We just want the stories here. We don't want what's actually going to happen. We just want the stories. Just fun. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to rebut and agree with some of the stuff that Dan said. I agree that the Leafs are the team that could knock off the Lightning because they're not expected to. The Leafs do not do well in the playoffs. The Leafs have lost first round. They're against the top team, or at least the the reigning Stanley Cup champions. I think that could happen, because it happened to the Leafs. The Leafs were the top team in the North, and they got run over by the Canadians' uh, games 5, 6, and 7. However, I think, actually, they would have a better shot against the Panthers, similar to what Craig said, because Bobrovsky is hot and cold. Mm, He would be the starting goalie, and it'd be Campbell against Bobrovsky, Hot and cold goalies, which team is going to outscore the other because they're not going to get that hardcore uh, goalie support or defense there. Well, they got Ekblad and things, but Ekblad's basically Riley. And, and you, can, you can see the parallels in uh, Florida's defense to Toronto. So I'd actually rather play... Um, okay, never mind. I, I just said I'd, I'd rather play both. Okay, that's bad. That got, kind of got into a circle there. <laughs> But I do agree. Oh my God, I don't want to play Carolina. No, 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 no. No, I can't no. take that serious. That's just that's just kryptonite right there. It's yeah. like Freddie yes. Anderson is going uh. to shut the door in spite whether they end it on a bad note or not. It's just going to be like, no, this this isn't happening. I'm beating you. You didn't Plus, bet you don't on want me. To put the Leafs through that. No, no, no. Yeah. Just the mental game there is too much for this team. I feel. And you know what? I'm going to stick with what I'm saying. I'd rather. Tampa or Florida, because if it's Boston or Washington, uh, the Leafs are one of the top seeds. And we've seen in the past couple of years, they can't handle that. When they were better than Boston, they lost. When they were better than Columbus, they lost. When they were better than the Canadians, they lost. I would almost rather than Boston, they lost. When they were okay, no, 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 they lost. They were they were supposed to lose those ones. The ones they were supposed to win. The ones they were supposed to win. They still lost in shame, Game 7, Game 5, Game 7. But if they're supposed to lose this one, why would they also then supposed to win? What did I say? Well, you, you, you said that they could they could. We're going Tampa too far because... back, Craig. You're going too far back. We're going with more recency bias. More recency bias is good for the news, okay? It's good, right? No, bad. But I'm thinking this team, not... The Washington against Washington team. That's a completely different team now. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Not that first team against Boston. I, I am thinking more the second time against Boston, Columbus, and then obviously the Habs. I want them to face a good team because even in the regular season, we've seen they do better against good teams than bad teams. Even in this little stretch here, like, ugh, Buffalo game. Ugh. One, mm. one nice thing, though, is that we only have to wait a few weeks for a bunch of these preview games to happen. In, yes. On the 27th, we play the Panthers, then we play Boston, 
then a little bit of a break, and then Lightning Panthers and so and Capital. So we're gonna see all of those previews just before the playoffs start. Who knows where the and Leafs Carolina will be in the next week at that point? And Carolina next week. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So it's uh it's gonna be interesting coming down the pipe to see what happens. Could be another Kyle foot in the mouth moment. Not uh not uncommon to happen on the podcast and in real life. You never know. You never know. Very flexible. Last uh, little question <laughs> here to finish things off, and maybe we'll make this our, uh, what do we call it again? Your hostile take. Which playoff uh, format do you prefer? The wildcard system that we currently have or the old conference system where it was Eastern Conference and then Western Conference, and you have one against eight, two against seven, three against six, and, and so on and so on. Craig, which do you prefer? Oh, one to eight, but I love your so on and so on. It was just longer than saying four versus five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one more, and I'm like, why did I skip that one? <laughs> yeah, definitely one through eight. It just seems to make more sense than having two versus three in the league somehow playing against each other. Like, you play all the other teams four times, so you're going to create some sort of rivalry anyways. That's fair. I, I don't mind the wild card, sy- wild card system. I think it adds a little bit of intrigue coming up into the last part of the season. Uh, that keeps people watching. So from an NHL perspective, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I haven't hated it, so I, I would I prefer that. I just find it silly that you could ha- you could have two of the top four teams, essentially, in that side go home in the first round or forced to go home in the first round. It's yeah, just... Well, look at last it, it year. Seems so, it just makes the second round so unbalanced. I agree. The first round is almost the most exciting because of this, and then it almost goes downhill from there. Yeah, that's fair. It's, just, it's, it's not quite as exciting because some of the top teams, and this year especially will happen, have been dropped in the first round. Like it's, That's not how you keep people watching through the Stanley Cup final. And you can't have the top four teams go on to the next round in this situation. One of the top four yeah. teams is forced to go in the first round just because of the format. So you lose all those big names, but yeah, that's fair. And big money. And big money. Well, even what, well, what I just said there, going against Tampa, Tampa and the Leafs, you want to see them meet up in the conference final. You don't want to see right, them meet yeah. up in the first round and go at it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's got to be second or third round for, for teams like that. So I would prefer definitely to go back to, to 1v8, 2v7, and uh, 3v6, but not 4v5. <laughs> no, screw that. Yeah. Exclude them. <laughs> no, they are. There's something else. That was fun. This is fun. Let's do a bet. We haven't done a bet in a while. I got a fun one. So the Arizona Coyotes are our next game and likely the game that you are either watching while listening to this or is tonight. And for some reason, nobody knows why, the Arizona Coyotes really like to score goals these days. They're one of the last place teams in the league. Nick Ritchie. It's a playoff run, baby. It's, just, it's, it's a playoff run. They're going for it. So <laughs> Carolina Hurricanes. Did I just say Carolina? No, Arizona Coyotes. Why did I say that? It's so weird. I don't weird. know. It's okay. Nobody knows why. I'm trying. Why is my phone not working? Get going, phone. <laughs> and there we go. Last game against the Red Wings. The Coyotes <laughs> scored nine goals. Nine goals. What's with the Red, red Wings and huge scores? I don't know. I Garbage don't know. goaltending. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I guess. You're right. Against the Senators. Arizona against the Senators. Now, this is, this is like bottom of the league sort of stuff. Eight goals. Now, they let in five in that game, but eight goals. An eight-goal game followed by a nine-goal game. And nothing else before that. So, my bet is how many goals in total are scored in the Leafs versus Arizona game, especially because the Leafs put up a 10 spot a couple nights ago. So, Arizona game, how, how, many, uh, how many? And this is a double because... We carried over the last bet because uh, we it was so bad. We thought we were going to destroy Montreal, and in fact, we got destroyed. Mm, mm, that was embarrassing. So, mm. any mini money more? Craig goes first. Five, only five, only five. Wow, I'm gonna buck the trend. Okay, Dan, I'm gonna say eight. It's gonna be five three for Toronto. My God. Okay, now I obviously get the button here. I get to decide if I want to go low or if I want to go high. I'm gonna say. 10. Yeah. You went high. I went high. (laughs) Especially because the last couple games has been 5 4, 6 4. Yeah. Like it's it's going to be a lot. Or it's going to be like 1 0 because they'll get uh, uh, Velmeca 
and he's just Vesna worthy goalie for some reason against the Leafs and against the Avalanche. Like only against the really, really <laughs> good teams. Oh, so he's Georgiev. Yes. Except this year he's not been great and he's like, I want to trade to be a starter and I deserve it. And I'm like, uh, I don't know, man. He hasn't played the Leafs enough yet. That's true. He deserves a trade <laughs> because he's not going to get past Shesterkin, but to be a starter, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. That was a very leaf heavy podcast, but it was super fun because there's lots going on. Trade deadlines coming up. Gentlemen, anything left to say about our Toronto Maple Leafs? Congratulations, Wayne Simmons, on a thousand games. Oh yeah, yeah that buddy. was pretty cool. That was Silver so sick. cool. That was neat. That was great. And was seeing all the teams that he played for too. Yeah. yeah. He got to do it with his hometown team. He got to start a line with uh fellow scorer Borean. Michael Bunting and Torontonian, or I guess from Mississauga, Jason Spezza. Yeah. So it's a nice little thing having Bunting on that top line with him just to represent his hometown. Very yeah. cool. Beautiful Very little cool. tribute. Yeah. Okay. We've got a couple games coming up this week. Let's see some goals, but let's see some goal tending too. Yay. Go Leafs go. Go Leafs go. Go Leafs go. Go. <laughs> what the fuck just that? <laughs> go? It's Matthew's charging into battle. Go!